You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadulu. All right, everybody, breaking news coming out just last night around midnight was when the story started to break. I got a notification on my phone from ESPN Zap. Pretty big stuff regarding the USFL and the potential cancellation of the season. It's not set in stone yet that it's going to happen, but with what's going on legally regarding the naming rights of the USFL and the team names, there is a possibility that we may not be able to see the inaugural season of the USFL. Just last night, it was filed and stated that Fox is now being sued by the real USFL LLC. The complaint was filed on Monday in a California federal court seeking an order to prevent Fox from using both the USFL name and the team names of all 18 original teams in the USFL, which includes the namesakes that are being used for the teams in the USFL's newly rebooted season coming up here at the uh, middle of April, excuse me. Larry Kasan- Kasanka, I believe is how it's pronounced. I hope that's how it's pronounced, is leading the ownership group who filed this lawsuit. He was the director of scouting and later ended up becoming the GM of the Jacksonville Bulls during the league's original tenure back in the early to mid 80s. This is an issue because... There is a possibility that, you know, if this legal stuff gets pushed through quickly enough, they have a way to be able to just flat out essentially tell Fox, we own these rights and you can't have a season with both the league name and the team names. And at this point in stage, I'm assuming all the uniforms are made, all the branding for everything has been put out. And I mean, like we're literally, if it's March 1st, April 16th is kickoff for the inaugural season. You're looking at six weeks to put together new uniforms, new logos, names, all, you name it, all that stuff, get the the branding name, like rights and everything, the trademarking and all that. It's not realistic. And it puts this season in jeopardy. One of the biggest pieces of the lawsuit point to that the original press release from Fox, which initially stated that Fox owns the right to all of the original trademarks, has recently been changed because it was brought to their attention that wherever they secured the rights for wasn't legitimate. But when you go to the publication now, it just states that the USFL League is set to kick off April 16th and has no affiliation with the old USFL. But initially, they were saying it was a continuation. I remember when that story came out, I had to go back and look it up. And it it, it does reflect those changes that were stated in the lawsuit. So it's clear Fox at least had some sort of knowledge of all this going on and kind of continued onward anyways. So... This this poses a problem for the league. It really does. And it's unfortunate because I'm very excited about this. I love the idea of spring football and players who maybe are not going to get an opportunity in the NFL this upcoming season have a shot to maybe, you know, present themselves in a more positive light to NFL teams and, you know, get some game tape and get some live action football to show these teams and, you know, show them, hey, I deserve a roster spot on that 53 man final group come September. But I mean, even back in back in June of 2021, this was brought up by the actual former USFL from the 80s executive director Steve Earhart, who told the Philadelphia Inquirer he was shocked to hear the league was even being resurrected, and he stated that the real USFL LLC never sold their rights to any of the league's networks or trademarks or anything or like any of the trademarks from the league, and never sold it to the Fox or I believe uh, is it NBC or CBS that they're I think it's NBC that they're partnered with, who's also going to be airing the games they never sold the rights to any of those people so they don't understand why everyone's saying that they're going to be broadcasting this league and whatnot so this isn't even the first time it's been brought up it was brought up back in june of last year that was not something that i saw i remember the announcement of the league itself but i never saw anything about the real usfl llc coming out and being like how are you guys using all these names without the rights to the names we still own them and everything this presents a massive problem Earhart himself, and this is a statement to the Philadelphia Inquirer that he made, and this is quote-unquote, quote we always took the position, and when I say we, 
I mean, myself, former Philadelphia Stars President Carl Peterson, former Birmingham Stallions President Jerry Sklar, and others. A lot of people gave their blood, sweat, and tears and fortunes to the league. We were only around for three seasons, but the USFL was a classy, well-respected name. We always said that we didn't want to just jump in there and sell it to somebody who was going to be underfunded and blow up and give a halfway kind of effort. So we never did give or sell or authorize the rights to anybody. I mean, goddamn, if if that's the case, they and Fox and NBC or whoever, the ownership of the new USFL league it is, if they don't fork over money... You can't have this season in six weeks. And I just don't see a realistic way for this to go off without them doing so. They have so much time and money and everything invested right now. There, I just I don't see any other option than money being forked over for the trade rank, trademark name for like the trademarking of these names. And at this point, you know, do the original owners and the people who hold the rights feel kind of burned and pushed around? Possibly. If Fox is a partner in all of this and they want to sit down with us and discuss this and we think it makes sense, we are certainly open to that. That was what Earhart said back in June. He even left the door open for them to come in and negotiate. And it sounds like maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. I don't know exactly because there's nothing really stating whether they did or not. But the attorney, Alex Brown, who's representing the real USFL LLC, stated himself In the announcement of the lawsuit, Fox has tried to bully the prior owners into submission. If that is the case, then clearly they must have met in some capacity or in some way. And maybe Fox and whoever else is involved in all this did not want to fork over the amount of money they were asking for for the naming rights. Whatever it may be, it sounds like they met up and Fox was just kind of like, tough luck, that was 30 years ago, we're going to run with it anyways. And if that's the case then you can forget about it. There's, this is probably not going to happen. So with all of that in mind, the USFL is definitely in danger. It There is a, a very strong likelihood that this can't happen because the, the, the LLC the U, of the real USFL, they can seek to block Fox and company from launching the April 16th start date. They won't be allowed to air the games, use the league names, use the logos, use anything And it can't go on. They legally are allowed to do such a thing. If they own the rights to all this stuff and they're like, listen, (laughs) legally, they have every right to stop this from happening. It's going to be a tricky situation, something we'll have to keep an eye on, of course. Uh, as, I, as I've said the last you know week or two since I first announced that I'd be covering the USFL, I was very excited for this whole thing. I still am excited for it, uh, maybe a little bit slightly less, because now it seems fairly uncertain about what's going to happen with that April 16th kickoff date. I hope that everyone can kind of put things aside and you know the money that they're looking for gets forked over. I don't know, but hopefully... Everything gets resolved and April 16th comes and we see a kickoff happen. Otherwise, this is a very large disappointment and I'll probably have to look for another spring league to cover or something because I was I, I'm, I was kind of planning on talking a lot about this stuff. And I mean, I haven't done a ton of planning, but I was definitely putting together some ideas for how I wanted to cover the USFL and I would not like that to go to waste. So I might just find another league to cover, but we'll see. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. But that is the big breaking news about the USFL. Let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think? What's going to happen? I mean, there's a lot to a lot to dissect here, a lot to read about, and a lot to, I guess, look forward to, whether you look forward to it positively or negatively, um, as far as how this lawsuit's going to shake out and what is ultimately going to happen. Again, we got 16 weeks, April 16th. It's March 1st right now. You got a month and a half to figure this whole thing out, both USFL and U- the real USFL LLC. Time, clock is ticking. Draft just happened. Teams are pretty much set. I'm sure the uniforms and everything are paid for. Something's going to have to give, and it's probably going to be Fox, but we'll see. That's all I got for you guys. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Have a good one.